All right, so let's get back into Facebook and what I want to mention here. Um, again, it's kind of easy to get lost, but what I want to do is go back to the main page, the main screen of my page. You should see that you have a button that says Page. So can I ask a question? Yes. So if we leave the page published right now, um, will it trigger you know, any targeting whatever sponsors or something? Should we just not publish it until we're ready? Or? I sort of don't feel that's that useful because you can set this up pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. But it is it is a strategy. Unpublish it, do all the settings, make it perfect, and then publish it. Although personally we don't really do it, we just we already have a plan, I already know what we want to do, and it's not that much to set up, and then we make it public. Uh, so here again, you know, if I were if I were to click home, that's gonna take me to the home of my personal profile. So be careful there. And the default is everything is going to take you back to the personal. I don't want to be under personal, I want to be under the business. So you have to remember if it's not explicitly listed on the top left corner, you have to uh, click on the triangle on the top right corner and select your business. Once you've selected there, it should tell you you're currently managing your business. You can also type it manually there, but anyway, you have to be on your business. We have page, so that you can do some of the basic setup of your page, like adding your logo, adding a cover image. What we've got here, which it says add button, but other platforms would call it a call to action button. So let's say here, page. We have page, messages, notifications. We have page, messages, notifications, insights. You may not have insights. I know people sometimes don't have insights until they use uh, their account for a little while. And then we've got settings. What else here? Settings and help. So those are the main menu items, main page menu items. So under the page screen where you set your uh, branding and about info messages where you see who's communicating with you notifications where you see your updates right the other networks tell you someone liked your post someone replied to you someone followed you well that's notifications updates insights where you see your stats. Very important screen to keep track of how well you're <coughs> using Facebook. Publishing tools, where you see your past posts to repurpose them. So if I want to reuse a post from two months ago, I can pull it up easily under publishing tools and use it again. Settings, where you set your settings. Uh, I forgot to mention this. Uh, be sure to look at notifications. Notification settings. The default notification settings are pretty open, meaning it says, send me an email when someone likes my post. Send me an email when someone replies to my post. Send me an email when someone blah blah blah. So if you get too many of these messages in your inbox, Go to the settings, go to the notifications, and fix those. Put it to show me no notifications or minimal notifications or whatever. I personally have it set to don't send me any extra notifications. I don't need another email to tell me I got a like, because I will already get that in the notification screen in Facebook or in the app on my phone. I don't need seven emails to tell me I got seven likes because I'm going to see that in the notifications in Facebook, personally. And help is 
where you get help. Where you can ask a question into the system, where you can figure out how do I do this, how do I do that, why does this have a problem, advice. There's also like case studies in there and best practices. It's not just, don't just go there when you need help, when you're in trouble. Go there to also further educate yourself. There's a bunch of great internal tutorials that will help you do stuff. So, under, under the page itself, I was about to say, this is also where you add your call to action button. A call to action or a CTA call to action is something that a person can click on to accomplish something. Sounds very vague, yes. But think about it in the real world. A call to action in the real world is that I give you a coupon. I'm trying to get you to buy my product because I'm giving you a coupon. That's a kind of a call to action. Uh, I'm trying to call you into action. Do something. Here's something to do something. In the digital world, we have something very similar. We can make a button that says, call us now. Here's our phone number. Or buy this right now, 10% off. Or get more info. Or book a table. Those are calls to action. Those are direct actions you want people to accomplish. Facebook has this. Most of the other networks do not have this. Call to action is right there. Add a button. Add a button to get people to take an action from your page. And we have a, a list of predefined actions. It'd be great if it's completely open-ended and I can make it exactly what I want, but there's a list of like six or seven possible common actions that should work. But here from your page, add button just to look at it. If it's about booking a service, getting in touch, learning, downloading, let's say getting in touch. I want people to call me to get a free consultation over the phone. Get in touch. The button will say, call now, contact us, sign up, get a quote. <coughs> you cannot change the button to say, hey everyone, call us right now. now you can't change the button to say what you want. It's going to be one of these names pre-made. Pre Book now. Start order. Shop now. See offers. But if I want people to call now, I select that, I put my phone number, and now that button will be added there and it will change. It will say, call now. And when a person is on their phone, on Facebook, and they see the button call now, they click that and it will call now. If instead I want some other action, learn more. I want them to watch a video. If I've got a video set up already, so that needs the setup of the video, but if I've got a video, do I want them to watch a video over on some other website like YouTube, or do I have a video that's already on my Facebook? You know, I upload my video. Free instruction. I would love that to say free real estate tips video. But no, I cannot do that. It will say, watch a video. But the video will be about real estate tips. So there is that limitation about what can your button say, but there's a lot of actions of what you, your button can do, and all of these are CTAs, call to actions, calls to action. Add a call to action button. So you guide people, yes? As long as, as long as you want. When you activate it, it'll be there permanently. You can remove it or change it to some other action whenever you want. So this will guide people to do something. Uh, watch my video, call us, donate. Well, I don't think there's a donate button, uh, maybe, but different things to do. There is, on the left side, it might be hidden, it was hidden for me. Another important thing to do on your home page here, it's under See More, About. 
There's a whole screen you should look at there about setting up about the business, what your products are, your address. Yes? A question about media. So when I put there that my website or my web, the video on my website, mm -hmm. when they press the uh, watch video, you know, Facebook now, they are not letting you leave the app. Yeah. They are like showing in there. Yeah. So is it going to affect my conversion? Well, it depends what the it depends what the conversion is. If on your website you're trying to make a sale or whatever, it could affect you because they don't want they don't want to let you leave out of the, the page, out of the Facebook app. But if the conversion itself is just to watch the video, it shouldn't affect it. So it's going to depend on what kind of conversion you have. But yes, unfortunately, there's what are we on now? Strike five for <laughs> Facebook. Um, yeah, it keeps you locked into the system as much as possible. And any other competing system, they're the biggest one in the world. They're, they're doing it how they want, and other people can just complain. But, you know, unless there's regulation or something, they're going to keep doing it. They want to do it their way, and we can't really stop them. And, yeah, we suffer for some of these changes. And what are we going to do, not use Facebook? Yeah, that's viable, but then you lose this audience. So no easy answer. Yes, Facebook sometimes doesn't do the best thing for us. <coughs> So very briefly here under about, you would want to fill in as much of this stuff here. What's the mission of your business? When did the business start? Choose your username. Here's where you can change this other stuff. I don't want retail anymore. I want something else. What's the story about your company, the myth, the founding mythology, whatever. You have all of this stuff to edit about your business under the about screen. And all of this is to further help you get found because let's say I'm on, you know, John Smith is on his home screen and he needs a plumber. So when he's in Facebook and he searches for plumber San Diego, if I've got the words plumber and San Diego in the story and in my name and the username and all of that, it can help me get found. Look at how over here, Ozzy's Plumbing and Drains. That's a plumbing business nearby and they've got their name and it shows up there, Plumber Tom. So the more active your site is and popular, you'll appear here first. And even if you don't appear first, you can see all results. And it's going to start to show here. So Bill Howe, they, they're very famous, and they weren't number one on the previous search. They were here eventually. Places, articles, etc. So filling in your filling in your about info and boosting, which we'll get to in a moment, will help you also to, uh, to reach an audience. Yeah, that'll be fine. Keep consistency. If you've got your about info on other networks, you can you can use the same one. That's yeah. If I'm, if I'm gonna uh, put my uh, the audience or everything mm -hmm. without paying. Am I gonna still show up on the search bar when they search like plumber? Let's say they search plumber and I'm doing plumber thing, but I'm not. I didn't pay yet. Mm. So am I gonna show up on the search? Yes and no. Okay. And that's getting us to our main topic right here. So, two main ways to use Facebook or all, all social media. Here's the big secret. Free or not free? You can use all of these networks for free. You can create any account, use it as much as possible every day for free, completely. But more and more of these networks, especially Facebook, are more effective when you use it in the non-free way. So post to the widest audience for free post to a narrower audience, not for free. And oftentimes the narrower audience is the more effective audience. Um, the audience that is going to call you or hire you is a specific audience. Um, and it is cynical to say, oh, what a, how convenient that I have to pay to reach the right audience. Yeah, just like in 200 years of advertising in the real world. Of course you reach more people in the real world if you pay to reach more people. 
if I stand in the corner all day long with a sign pointing to my business, well, I might have 50 people that drive by and I might have 10 people that come to my store. If I pay to be on the radio, maybe I get, you know, 30 people that come to my store. If I pay to be on the local news, maybe I'll get 100 people to come to my store. And if I pay for a commercial during the Super Bowl, I may have 2,000 people that come to my business. So yes, in the real world, the more you pay, the more you reach, the more you get results. And in the real world, this is something that most business owners understand and accept that they should be paying for marketing, you know, that sign, that radio ad, whatever. What a lot of small businesses don't want to believe, even with all the proof I can show, is that you should also be paying on Facebook and Twitter and Pinterest and Instagram to reach your audience. Even though you can use all of these networks for free all day long, the best result happens when you pay. And I'll show you exactly how that works right now. Because at least the good news is, on the not freeway, Good news. Start with as little as one dollar. Bad news. The taste of paying real money for you know unreal things. Meaning a tweet or a post or a pin on Instagram. It's not real. It's just on the computer. It's on. The, it's pictures on the screen. It's dots. It's not real. Someone can say, yeah, this phone physically is worth $999, according to Apple. We can believe that this is worth that much because it's a physical thing with technology and the latest glass and metal and all of this stuff. We can believe something is worth something because it's real and tangible. But a lot of people don't believe, yeah, that tweet was worth $200 because I paid $200 to reach a thousand people and I made 700 sales and that netted me ten thousand dollars. So you just have to get that taste out of your mouth that yeah you are gonna pay real money to Facebook or Twitter or Pinterest for your messages to reach more people. So back to the question will will my business show up when they do the search? Yes your business will show up but the businesses that are paying are gonna show up higher because they're paying. Just like on a Google search. I search for local biz local plumbers on Google and I get a bunch of ads first and maybe a lot of us hate those and, and ignore them and go to the next result but those next results are, are often that high up because they engage in a lot of Twitter, Facebook, SEO and a lot of people see those ads and either you know don't know or don't care that it's an ad and click on it and get a result. So the person paying Google to be number one in an ad still made money by paying and the people that say I'm never gonna click an ad well those people still are gonna reach the business that did the effort here on Facebook itself also you may see these ads on the side you know you're on your home screen and you see ads on the side here what are, what are the ads I'm seeing so far here uh, right here Sandy Conrady skincare I may completely ignore this and never click it at all and actively click the click the button. Don't show me that. Now obviously you're never going to turn this off. It's going to come back again as soon as you reload the page. So you're always going to see ads. Genia Biocells. I don't care about that. I don't care about Launchpreneur. You're going to waste your time closing all of these. People, A lot of people ignore them. But once in a while you do see an ad that is about something that I do care. I do care about skin spas. So I will click on it. And whatever amount of money Genesis Skin Spa paid, it was worth it. They reached an audience, they made a sale, they did a they sold a spa worth five hundred dollars and they paid twenty dollars to get that ad in front of people. That's all marketing everywhere, not just digital. People pay to put their commercial on TV, whether someone goes to the business or not. But studies show that people do get more success with more advertising, word of mouth, in a wider, in a wider area. So what about between social media and radio and TV? Is it still more productive? It's going to depend on your audience, because if I've got a young millennial audience, they're not going to hear me on the radio, probably. 
And if I've got an older audience that is near retirement, they're probably not going to see me on social media. So there is no one-size-fits-all answer about which works best on, uh, on our options. It depends on the actual audience itself. So the way we further target and we pay to reach the audience is right here. You see it all over Facebook. You see promote. That's the keyword for not free. So under promote, if you see a button for promote, there's something there. You also see that when you're about to post something. I'm going to write some text. I'm going to share a photo of a product. I'm going to go live for my product. I'm going to create an event, whatever. Once you're creating something, you will also see boost post. It's a variation of this promotion. We call it different terms, but it's all the same thing. Pay to reach more people. So let's say here, I'm trying to say, sale this Saturday, 10% off, use coupon code PMC111. If I were to simply publish this to the whole world of, of Facebook, no one's going to really see it, even though when I set my demographics on this other screen, even though I narrowed it to 100,000, Honestly, Facebook really nowadays, they don't say it officially, but the only way a business really is going to succeed is through the boosting. Um, just using the publishing is not going to get you that far. Can I ask you just to go back to where it started and, and lost, how you get to that? When you're on the page of the business, you're going to then have on your write something, you're going to see boost. I don't see this boost write something. I don't see the write something. So it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it might be because you're new. Um, again, this is Facebook that might have different uh, settings for different accounts, especially if you're a new account. So if you don't quite see it, you have to make sure you've got your account fully set up <clears throat> and use it, and then it might activate. So if you don't see it, uh, there's nothing I can do. You just yeah, have to I'm use the account. I'm on the but I, I still don't see it. What's that? I'm on the Victor's Bakery page. You're not going to be on Victor's Bakery. You're going to be on your business. And then on your business, you're going to have the ability to write something. I'm on your business. The example that you just did. You're not going to follow my example because it's my business. Whatever business you created, you're going to see it on your business to write something on your business. So whatever your business is in the triangle at the top right corner. So I created something called Victor's Bakery, but whatever you called, you're going to click your triangle up there and go to your business, and then you can boost your business. So whatever I'm writing here to try to reach more people, I have the option here of boost post. And this is going to be a screen... Yes? Instead of clicking publish, just click boost. Yes. Uh, publishing is not going to get you very far. It's really going to be about boosting. I still don't have the button that says I'll, I'll help you during, during the break. So under boost post, here is where we can further target the audience. This is a screen very similar to the previous screen where we chose the age and the location. And here, notice, I've created audiences that I've named healthy eating fans. Uh, wealthy baked good aficionados. So I've created an audience where I can uh, target specifically to that group. And then there'll be a spot about the budget. Here it's saying if you spend $20 to target this group, you can reach about 2,000 to 5,000 people. Right now I have zero followers suddenly I would start to reach 2,000. I have different budgets here. You know, they'll gladly take $1,500, and you can reach 110,000. Choose your own. You can do $1. Even with $1, I can reach about 100 to 270 people. That does not guarantee 100 sales. That does not guarantee 100 calls. So that does not guarantee anything except that your message will be visible by more people that might most likely call you or hire you or whatever. Yes. So you're perfectly buying followers. No. 
you're only buying views. Exposure. Remember exposure. Yeah. Remember when we talked about impressions and conversions. Impressions are that I'm showing my stuff to people. Conversions are that I actually uh, sold something. So this is not buying followers. This is this is just showing your content to the right people. They can then choose to follow or not. That whole strategy of actually buying followers, don't do that. And none of these companies sell you that. You know, third-party uh, spam accounts sell you that by followers, and those are worthless because you may then have, oh, I have 10,000 followers, but they're all fake. They're not going to buy anything. They're not going to reply to you. They're not going to like your stuff. This is paying to put a commercial on uh, the local news. This is paying to put a commercial uh, during General Hospital. This is paying to put an ad, you know, on the morning zoo crew on the radio. It doesn't guarantee that people will call, but it, it, it's, you know, going to be shown to people. And even if one dollar could get you some results, some, some likes, some comments, some follows, maybe a sale, but that still depends on on you right here. If I'm writing sale this Saturday 10% off and I put a nice picture or whatever, it's still up to you to create your ad to boost it to reach the right audience. Even if you spend $10,000 and you make a terrible ad, it didn't help you. You've probably seen terrible commercials on TV or heard them on uh, on the radio and you know, you say, who's ever going to buy them? Who's ever going to call them? That's a terrible commercial. I don't trust them. I don't believe them. So it's still up to you to create something, then boost it, set a demographic, set a budget, set a duration. For one day, Facebook will spend $1 to reach the healthy eating fans group that I made. I chose Oceanside, San Diego, X, Y, and Z age, etc. I choose that. For one dollar, Facebook will show my stuff directly to them most often. It's still then up to them for them to click buy or click the link or click like. I can do this two-week campaign, but I, I need at least a dollar per day. So okay, I'll put fourteen dollars. That's gonna reach about a thousand people. Not a thousand sales, not a thousand calls. It's going to be visible to a thousand people that are most likely going to then buy my product or call me or do my action. Can you add your phone number if you offer a service? Yeah, or a post that definitely. You can do that. You can you can set this up how you want: phone number, address, uh, a video, a, a picture, whatever to entice people because you're paying to get it to people, but it's still up to you. You know, you lead the horse to water, but you make it drink. You put some water in that post. I was wondering if they just uh, contact you for Facebook or if you should put your contact information. Whatever is, is most effective or whatever you're comfortable with, because people can contact you in Facebook. Um, so if you're comfortable that way, great. But if you put a phone number and that sort of thing, then they'll call you on the phone and uh, that might be better. So this is a system very similar in Twitter as well. And this is a system very similar also in Pinterest. And, you know, uh, I'm sorry, but they just stopped paying me at 1 o'clock. <laughs> so we have to wrap it up, and there's a class waiting to get in. But this, you know, I, I would like a little more time to talk about it. I think we'll come, maybe we'll come back to it a little bit more at the beginning of the next meeting, but there is something very similar to this in Twitter and Pinterest. And when we talk about Pinterest next time, we will see this very similar in Pinterest. So if I don't quite get back to it in Pinterest next time, I would recommend, you know, explore it yourself a little bit. You're not going to get charged right away or whatever, and you have to set up a credit card and such. But this, that we'll talk about some more, this is the way we use social media nowadays, grudgingly, but it works. We pay some amount of dollars, which could be as little as one dollar, to start to reach an audience. And then that snowballs where you get the followers and you go viral and you get more. But nowadays it takes money to make money. Pay a little bit, reach the right audience, social media works better. And yeah, that's cynical, but that's always worked in advertising in the real world.